This video is a general overview of how the Storybook app works. It is important for you to view this video so that you can understand how the individual parts of the Storybook app work with each other to form the overall story. In an effort to keep this video as short and on point as possible, we are going to introduce you to each part of the Storybook app while leaving the in-depth interworkings of those parts to other short videos. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and click right here on the Storybook app icon. The very first screen is going to have a list of all the projects that you have created. At the bottom of this screen, we're going to click New Project. Let's go ahead and name our project and give the address and a client ID number. The client ID number is optional. This is the main screen of the Storybook app. On the left hand side is what we call the preset. It is a list of rooms that may eventually contain pictures. This is the button that you want to be concerned with right now and that is the add pictures button. Let's go ahead and add some pictures. You're going to locate the folder that contains your pictures and click on it. Storybook is going to automatically import all of the pictures located in that folder. It will not overwrite any original photos. It's going to make a copy of them and import them into the Storybook folder. So you don't have to worry about having any of your original photos lost, deleted, or manipulated in any way. There is no real limit on the number of photos that you can import into Storybook. However, you may notice some lag times if you're importing thousands of photos at one time and you don't have a very fast computer. Now that we've imported the photos into Storybook, let's drag some of the photos into some of the rooms of the preset. First, let's go ahead and click on the plus sign next to the room called Entry. Inside of the room called Entry, you're going to notice that there are a number of other rooms. Some of these we call rooms or subrooms, and others we're going to refer to as labels. And we'll talk about the distinction in a moment. The first one is general view, then damaged area, and inside of damaged area we have distant view and close-up view. We also have a damaged area number two and a damaged area number three, and similarly they contain a close-up and a distant view. Let's go ahead and open an entire room so that you can see exactly how large it really is. Now you can see that one room is larger than our entire work area where we actually have to slide down to be able to see it all. Now you may be asking yourself why we need so many subrooms and subrooms of subrooms. Well, the idea behind Storybook is that you're going to be able to drag photos into rooms and have them automatically labeled as frequently as possible. For years, many of us have merely labeled our photos as Bedroom 1 or Bedroom 2, but really that isn't good enough. The end users who are looking at our photos need more information. And what we've devised is a method by which you can quickly drag photos into additional subrooms to label them with the names of those subrooms as well as the name of the parent room. Right here you have general view. General view pictures are very commonly taken by adjusters to show what the room looks like without trying to show any of the damages. Let's go ahead and drag some pictures into the general view area. You see how fast that is. Now these pictures were just labeled with the words entry and general view. Let's go ahead and print a report and take a look at what those pictures would look like. Now you see here it says entry and then general view. Down here the description says 
This is a general view of the room and is not intended to focus on any specific damage. All of this was done just by dragging the photos into that room entry general view. Now, entry actually is a room and general view is actually something we call a label and that's why you're seeing this description below. If this were just a room, you would not have seen any tag automatically dropped in at the bottom of the picture. Let's go ahead and see what would happen if we were to just drop a picture into a room. Let's close entry and let's create something that is just a room. We'll call it test room. Now let's go ahead and drag some photos into test room and let's go ahead and print the report again. Now, one thing you can note is that you can control the size of the PDF by holding down your control key and moving your mouse wheel backwards and forwards. So there again, entry general view has a tag printed at the bottom. Then when we get down to test room, you're going to notice that there is no tag. And that's because test room is just that. It's just a room. It doesn't have any tags associated with it. Without going too in depth, I'm going to show you the difference between the rooms and the labels and the subrooms. The very top tier room is called a room. Any room that is still black and underneath that top tier room would be called a subroom. So damaged area, damaged area to assembly would all be considered to be subrooms. Although there really isn't much difference between a subroom and a primary room, except for the fact that the subroom is nested below them. The rooms that have green text are actually considered labels. They're every bit the same as a room or a subroom, with the exception that when you drag a picture into them, it also tags the picture and places that tag below the picture in the report. So let's go ahead and go down this list of rooms and talk about the logic by which it was set up. Inside of the entry, we have a place to put the pictures that are considered to be general view pictures. Then we have three places where you can bring in your damage pictures. Some are going to show the distant view from across the room to give us an idea of where the damage is located inside the room, and the others are going to give us a close-up view of that damage. Over here we have a subroom, because it's black and not green, it would be considered a subroom, and it's called assembly. This is for photos that may show how the room is put together. For example, the baseboard is nested directly on top of the floor, or the door trim is nested inside the grout of the floor tile, or perhaps the popcorn acoustic texture ceiling is very thick right up against the wall, and when the textured ceiling would be scraped, it would also affect the wall. This room is just for close-ups of photos that would show the end user the types of problems that may be associated with how the room is assembled. The label for floor continuity is to show that the flooring in the room is continuous to the rooms outside, such as a hallway or a closet or a bathroom. The label for continuous from damaged area is useful for occasions when there may not be any damage in the room that you're photographing, but the floor is continuous into that room, and so for that reason, you are estimating things to be done, such as the floor to be removed, the baseboard on top of the floor to be removed, the walls to be painted because the baseboard's being removed, etc. Miscellaneous is just that. It's for miscellaneous photos in each room. In almost every single room that we have listed in our preset, our room tree, we have a bathroom. And the reason we did this instead of putting the bathrooms as separate and distinct rooms is that it would make our room tree significantly larger if we were to add the bathrooms additionally. So we put them inside of each room, and if you choose to use them, you can, and if you don't, then there's no harm. Inside the bathroom, you have, of course, the general view 
and the close-up and distant view of the damaged areas, the assembly, floor continuity, miscellaneous, etc. Then you also have subrooms. You have the bathtub, and then of course the same type of setup with the general view, distant view, floor continuity. Then we also have the toilet and the shower. Unlike a lot of the other applications for structural estimating, when you include a room in one of these room trees, or presets as they're called, it will not print in your final report unless you have dragged a photo into the room. So there really is no problem with having hundreds of rooms and subrooms that may never be used. The whole idea is to have enough rooms present to where you will rarely have to manually create a room, but not have so many rooms that you can't find your way among them. There is a happy medium between the two, and I think we found it. So let's close the entry. We can open up living room, dining room, breakfast room, and you'll see they're all constructed very similarly. Now when you get to kitchen, we actually removed the bathroom from kitchen and we put a pantry in its place. Almost all of the other bedrooms are similarly constructed. We also have three custom rooms that you can quickly edit. You can right click them, hit edit selected, and you could change this to Bedroom 5, if you had one. We also have roofing, exterior, fencing, and windows section. So when you click roofing, it's going to contain different types of labels, such as general view of roof, hail damaged shingles, hail damage to valley metal, shingle nails pulled up by wind, wind blown shingles, wind torn shingles. There's a number of different arguments that are attached to these labels as to why these building materials may need to be repaired or replaced. Let's go ahead and take a look at exterior. It's going to contain similar type arguments for different types of exterior building materials. The same goes for fencing and windows. And this is the test room that we created earlier. So let's go ahead and add a few pictures to the report to see what it might look like. 